NFL Hall of Famer Shannon Sharp got into a heated back and forth with Dylan Brooks, Ja Morant, T. Morant, and the Memphis coaching staff. More significantly, after the halftime scrum, Dylan Brooks may have crossed the line by calling a legendary three-time Super Bowl champion a pedestrian during his post-game interview. There was a report that he said he started to talk with you saying that you're too small to guard LeBron, and then you swore back on him. Is that what happened? What no, I told him he missed the shot. That's all. Do you think it's appropriate for a fan to kind of go back and forth with you guys like that? A regular pedestrian like him? No. He shouldn't have never came back in the game. But it's LA. Thanks, Don. Thanks, DB. Keep in mind that interview you just saw took place after LeBron's Lakers took the win in defense of Shannon, so Brooks could have just been simply mad about that. More on that coming up, but Westbrook going off, and most importantly, with Memphis only needing to hang onto the ball and get fouled to win the game, Dennis Schroeder getting the game-winning steal sealed the dub. The Lakers are now just a game back of the Suns for the final play-in spot, however, that's of course far from the headlining news here. Don't get me wrong, it was one hell of an elusive blitz from Schroeder, who tiptoed around Bane for the rare sneak up on you knockaway. Many were claiming that was a foul, but given Bain didn't even argue, I'd beg to differ. I understand the scrappy edge that Dylan Brooks has to him as a Toronto-born individual like him. I'd probably be a trash talker as well. That said, when it comes to calling a respected sports legend a pedestrian, Canadian basketball doesn't claim him. The NBA in general doesn't claim him with that opinion. It was good to see Unk squash the beef with Jaws' dad T afterwards, and Shannon told James that he always has his back after the Lakers took the win. While Shannon Sharp has transitioned from being known as a former NFL all-timer, into a controversial Fox Sports talking head, he still deserves to be respected as a fellow sportsman, and I'm not saying Brooks and the Grizz didn't have the right to tell the man to sit down, but they must have forgot that despite Sharp being 6 foot 2, he's 228 pounds of all muscle, not to mention one of the most dominant tight ends the game of football has ever seen. We're talking about a Hall of Famer in his respective sport who made 8 Pro Bowl appearances and had a hell of a long career for the physicality of the NFL. This man played 14 damn years in the most physically demanding sport on the planet. But it's not surprising that this Phoenix Suns-esque Memphis Grizzlies team didn't get the memo and decided to cross the line. Stay tuned for what all this says about the Grizz and how Shannon was backed up by LeBron's Lakers. But we're really close to 100k subs, and imagine if even a quarter of that 88.9% of you that aren't subscribed were, we'd probably be able to double that. Also hit thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm and follow at dflowhoops on Instagram and Twitter, I might just follow you back. Dennis Schroeder had 19 points, 8 boards, 9 dimes, on 10 for 11 foul shots, plus of course the game-winning steal and bucket to end Memphis's 11-game win streak. With Westbrook's performance, he just became the all-time leader in triple doubles off the pine. Russ is even making a solid case for 6th man of the year, being 2nd off the bench in points, 1st in boards and dimes, 3rd in steals, and 2nd in field goal percentage. Check out Westbrook's numbers over his last 5 outings, his first 5 games span averaging those numbers or better in nearly three years. Great to see Russ playing well, but on to the topic at hand. I made a video just on January 12th about why the Memphis Grizzlies wanted all the smoke, and while I respect Steven Adams for backing up that sentiment, and I guess standing up for his teammate, Dylan Brooks seemingly wanted none of the smoke. As he was walking in the other direction when the scrum with Sharp and Adams was going down, and to be honest, the Grizz being in the news for controversy just isn't a shocker, because before this went down with Sharp, even before Morant's I'm fine in the West comments, the Grizz had been establishing a controversial reputation for the past few years. This team operates differently than other successful NBA systems in that they're constantly having to back up their trash talk. Just take for example when Morant trash talked Curry after game two of the Western Conference semis. We saw how that ultimately turned out though. As you know, the Warriors would go on to win that series in six. Jaron Jackson Jr. tweeted out the Warriors slogan, strength in numbers, after a regular season win against them last year, which Klay Thompson would later reference after winning his fourth title in eight years 
Rivers, by the way, from Jaw and Brooks grittying on the Timberwolves logo, to Brooks saying the Grizzlies are a dynasty, despite Memphis not even making it out of the second round yet, or generally the constant trash talk from Dylan and Morant, among other Grizzly players, it seemed Memphis wanted every bit of backlash. But given the way they blew the game against LA, and how they let Shannon Sharp walk all over them, I'm really not sure if this team's ready to compete quite yet. I mean, they have everything as I mentioned in another video, which as always with statements I make on the record, I'll stand on. Basketball wise, this team is built to go the distance, and despite being controversial, they're damn entertaining I'll admit. However, when the pressure ramps up and every possession matters that much more, or when you have to win several games in a row on the road to survive in the postseason, it's a legitimate concern of mine whether or not this Memphis group 1-15 through 15 is ultimately mature enough to stay poised under said circumstances. The combination of the infamous LeShannon 1-2 punch, but the undermentioned and way too disrespected Russell Westbrook was just too much for Memphis. While these two are in their later years, Braun and Brody are two of the most dominant players going downhill that the game of basketball has ever seen. If this Laker team somehow sneaks into the postseason, which may not happen, with how the chemistry is looking with feel-good youngins and vets on the pine, and how Westbrook's fluidly accepted the bench roll, don't be surprised if the Lakers pull off a first-round upset. Recency bias aside, and I'm sorry Grizzly fans, but it was damn hilarious to see this team choke the way they did, considering all the trash talk, as this team has slowly but surely replaced the Phoenix Suns as the villain of the NBA. Someone has to play the villain role though, it just so happens that Memphis took it over the top when it comes to not respecting a legend from another sport. And I get it, once he enters the arena and is sitting courtside, he's just a fan at the end of the day, but he's not just any fan, he's the guy who defends LeBron from the employed LeBron hater in Skip Bayless. Not only did Sharp contribute a lot to sports during his playing days, but he's been the example of what a successful post-playing day's second career looks like. Sharp may stir up drama like the Grizz, but he never doesn't want the smoke. Here's how Shannon explained everything which led to the scrum. Sharp told ESPN's Dave McMenon, they didn't want the smoke, Dave. They do all that talking and jockeying, and I ain't about that jockeying. It started with Dylan Brooks. I said he was too small to guard LeBron. He said F you to me. I said F you back. He started to come at me and I said, you don't want these problems. And then Ja came out of nowhere talking. He definitely didn't want these problems. Then the dad came, but he obviously didn't want no problems. But I wanted anything they had. Don't let these fools fool you now, end quote. If the Grizz couldn't take the smoke from a retired 54 year old albeit in prime condition how are they going to fare against the hungriest 15 plus man bunches of players in their 20s and 30s come the playoffs with their current mentality this could be a recipe for disaster i mean playing with an edge is one thing but this may be a little too much smoke to inhale Who's in the right in your opinion, Shannon Sharp or The Grizz? Leave a comment down below on your answer regarding that. Competing Community Speaks with your take. Number one through five ranked shoutout commenters get a free jersey or shoe of their choosing. Today's commenter shoutout goes to JZZFT, who says, most underrated Celtic. Almost everyone on this team is underrated other than JT, Rob, and JB, because this team has so many great players who know their role and just do their job without hype or hoopla. D White, Brogdon, Big Al, Grant, etc but I'm gonna go with Marcus Smart. People who don't follow the Celtics carefully have no idea of his true value. Not only the 2021-22 Defensive Player of the Year, but distributor extraordinaire who knows and feeds his teammates as well as any point guard in the league. Dependable low post score when called upon. Streaky but clutch stroker from three when it matters most. And last but not least, the leader, heart, and soul of this team. The guy who always steps up his game when it's winning time. Appreciate that take and every other one. 